Geek Myths, a novel about life, love, and the pursuit of sonic screwdrivers. Available in paperback and Kindle edition from Amazon. Scanning for audio. Welcome, welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This is another one of those, well, 20 for 20 podcasts, where I go back over the last 20 years of Big Finish, because it's the 20th anniversary, kind of now, and I look at the birthday story. I know it's been a while since I did this, and I'll discuss why in a bit. But this time I'm talking about release number 71, The Council of Nicaea, released in July... 2005. Now, if you cast your mind back, this is when Doctor Who was coming back to our screens. This is the year of Eccleston. This is the year that basically a lot of things changed, especially at Big Finish. Now, since this was a long time ago, people have now started to talk about this sort of thing. They've kind of been honest and said that the sales of their discs plummeted and stuff like that, which surprised me. But that's because I am a great believer that, well, you know, Doctor Who's kind of an audio medium now. But I suppose I'm just being a snob, really, aren't I? So, what's this one about? The year is 325 AD, in the city of Nicaea, the first great church council, called by the Roman Emperor Constantine, is due to begin. Here, theology, philosophy and politics will be brought together for millennia to come. The Doctor, Perry and Eremem are simply there to watch events unfold. Gaps remain in the history books and the Doctor has come to satisfy his curiosity. But none of them are ready for what greets them in Nicaea. Intrigue within the Imperial Palace has become violence on the streets. Mobs roam the alleyways, and blood is spilt in the name of faith. Even in the face of murder and injustice, though, the time travellers must force themselves to stay out of history, after all. Yet what is history to one person is the future to another, and is it possible for history to be rewritten? And if it can, can the Doctor afford to let it? This title's now out of stock on CD, so if you decide you do want it, you'll be able to get it at a bargain price, but as a download. Written by Caroline Simcox, directed by Gary Russell, and of course it's got Peter Davison, Nicola Bryant, and Caroline Morris as airmen. Apparently, Caroline has given up acting, which is sad, because her airmen was brilliant. I mean, she was a great companion. And yes, this was the time when we were all still concerned with filling in the gaps between certain Doctor Who stories. It's the sort of thing that just doesn't come up anymore. People just go, yeah, it's big finish, that's fine, they can go on their way. So, this is the first story to be released after the 2005 relaunch. It gets a bit scary because people have gone, well, I wanted some Doctor Who, but now that Doctor Who's on the telly, I don't need Doctor Who on CD anymore, do I? Except they probably did it in their own comedy accents, not mine. Not good. Not good at all. Because, yes, I'm an audio snob. Yes, I love Doctor Who on audio. And that's kind of where I'm at. And I loved these stories. I really did. Now... Carolyn Simcox may not be well known to you after all. She, if you do a search, she comes up as this author and she also comes up as the author, uh, the co-author of the Nymon story with the Eighth Doctor. This is her first outing by herself. There are interviews with her on uh, the Verity podcast, I'm pretty sure. But this, she's also in, and uh, yeah, let's use those rabbit ears again, real life, a vicar, a priest. And as such, she's got a background in this sort of thing. Now, that's probably why you would end up expecting her to write a story like this. 
But of course, once you look into the story, you find out that although this is a purely historical story, she actually set out to write one with Scaroth of Jagaroth in it. So although you'd just go and be able to go, oh yeah, fair enough, it's, it's, a, it's a theologian doing a pseudo-historical, it's a sto proper historical, fine. No, she set out to write proper sci-fi with people interfering with history. And what we got is this. Now, why has it been so long between my last 20 for 20 and this one? Well, obviously I went on holiday, I went to the States, I've been trying to catch up with the proper main range releases and all that nonsense. But also... I didn't really fancy listening to this one at all because it's a pure historical. Which is weird because I remember having massively fond memories of listening to it. It's a great story. But, again, being a snob, it's got no aliens. Oh, what a moany moan monster. Ridiculous. It's a cracking story. So, Mrs Cornell wrote this and... I would have loved the Scaroth version. I just want to see it, hear it, experience it just to see what it's like. But that would devolve from the historical fact of what's going on. And of course, Eremem gets involved and, and is passionate. And everyone just knows a little bit too much about religion, but it just works. So it's not a slog. It's a great story. Because what you've got is... Now, let's put it this way. I've got a background where I did used to know a lot about religion. It's ridiculous. I actually studied A-level RE. I know, that's useful. And there was a time in my life when I considered, well, you know, becoming a vicar. It, it was a fleeting moment, but I did see it as a job for life, which I now know isn't even the case, as opposed to a job for death, which is different. Because I am reasonably nice with people and I'm good with some people and I thought that would be quite a nice job. But I saw it as a job, not as a calling and my ideas of faith are... Well, apparently, if you're an atheist, it's not a good idea to be a priest. Yeah, leave it there. So I did th think I knew a lot about religion, but I just didn't and I'd never come across this at all. I felt as though this bit of my knowledge was just missing. So this is where my knowledge of the Council of Nicaea comes from this particular story. And if you don't know anything about the coming together of the different faiths and Constantine becoming the first Christian Roman Empire, and of course the Roman Empire eventually evolves into the Catholic Church and spreads its ability throughout the world. So although there was a rise and fall of the Roman Empire, what actually happens is, well, let's look at it this way. IBM used to make photocopiers. So if you wrote a book about the rise and fall of IBM, the photocopier company, you would miss out the rise and fall of IBM, the company that actually makes computers. Does that make sense? And that's what the Roman Empire becomes. And that's largely because of this event. So, as a pure historical, incredibly educational, incredibly interesting, and really well written. And I, for one, after listening to this, really do miss RMM. Look, here's the trailer. Decide for yourself, as always, but it's a cracking story. And after this, things start getting a bit more, not desperate, but they evolve. Because once Doctor Who's back on TV, well, several bets are off. So until next time, be seeing you. Doctor Who, the Council of Nicaea. Hail Caesar. What is it, Centurion? We've quelled a riot in the south of the city, Caesar. The cause? Religious differences, Caesar. Will it never stop? Uh, where have you taken us? Who are you? Thank goodness you're all right, Araman. You couldn't get your mouth shut, could you? Oh, please. You go stirring up trouble, turning people against the Lord's own truth. Do you think we'd let that go? Yeah. 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 We should just get into the TARDIS and leave now. Maybe that would be best. No. No? I can't stay here and let you change things. Come on. No. Aramem, what are you doing? I'm staying. If you stay, you will be staying forever. You will be stranded in this time. Then I will stay forever. I have made a promise to an honourable man, and I intend to keep it. You said Aramem promised to help, and she's working for you already. Truly, God is with us, Clement. At last, Constantine shall hear our voice. Our voice shall speak in the council, certainly, but Constantine still may not hear. We cannot ask for more. Perhaps he will be swayed, perhaps he will not. All I ask is that our beliefs are presented. Presented fairly. 
I just hope it'll be enough. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 